a hero from Japan who just so happened to be passing by. Hi, I'm Christopher Sabat, and I am All Might in My Hero Academia, Two Heroes. Hi, everyone. My name is Justin Briner, and I play Izuku Midoriya. Hi, I'm Erica Mendez, and I'm the voice of Melissa Shield. Hi, I'm Keith Silverstein, and I play Wolfram. Hi, my name is Ray Chase, and I play the character of David Shield in My Hero Academia Two Heroes. Ray, Keith, Erica, how you doing? Welcome to the My Hero Academia universe. I cannot wait to hear how it turns out. I'm so excited. Everything's gonna change for you now. Like, I know things weren't going so well for you before, but now, wow. You got ahead of yourself, Toshi! They're fast! Follow them, Dave! You're impossible! Your body always moves before you think! One thing I love about the show is how dependent it is on different generations. We're always showing how things were 20 years ago, and in this movie, we do the same thing. We get a nice glimpse into All Might's life before, uh, when he was living in America. We should do it so he hasn't uh, really figured out his catchphrase just yet. You're safe because I am here. Yeah, let me try something. I am here so you are safe. I love the, the flashback because I've kind of been yearning to know what it was like for All Might uh, back when he was younger. I've been always fascinated to know if like, did All Might always have this like super big epic voice? Or did it, at least at some point, like he not sound that, I mean, at some point he had to have sounded younger, maybe closer to Deku. Does that mean that Deku is going to get his own All Might voice? Is that going to happen? Justin, show us. Nope, can't. This was absolutely my first experience with My Hero Academia. I knew what it was in terms of, I've heard of it, I see the toys and the posters and everything all over the place, so I know it's a huge series. I was sold immediately because I'm, I grew up collecting comic books. I like the idea that these kids are training and, uh, and we're seeing the professional aspect the pro heroes that have been there for a while, you got the newbies coming up, we've got, we've got an organization that runs superheroes and there's rules and regulations. And I find that fascinating because we don't have that at all in our world. And in most of the comics when you read, you know, most of like the Marvel DC comics, there aren't those rules. They're kind of vigilantes, they do their own thing, whether they're super good about it or whether they use weapons or not. Kind of like where society has accepted superheroes and these are the rules and this is how it works. That's always fun. Yeah. Not strong enough. This is why I'm playing the quirkless girl. The movie was great and getting to be a part of it and being a support character, I think, was probably the best thing uh, for me because I feel that way a lot in real life. So I'm, I'm glad I, I got to be Melissa out of everyone. I think what was so great about the interactions between the students and uh, their battles in this movie was you get to really see what their particular brand of hero is, what drives them and compels them to do the heroic acts that got them up the tower. Mineta, you know, he's not in it for the, the purest of reasons, but regardless, he was able to do what he needed to in a crisis moment. Bakugo hates being in this uh, with everyone and with uh, all the other students, and yet, Whenever they need him, he jumps on into the scene. All Might kind of struggles with wanting to be the protector and wanting to be the teacher, on the other hand. And uh, this movie is uh, no exception. He's having to tell Deku, no, please stay back, don't help, but you know, he needs help. It is a tough struggle, and I can imagine, as a father, I can, I can totally understand what he's going through. You want to arm him with the skills that he needs to be a better person. Um, 
and a better hero, but at the same time, you don't want him to get killed in the process. But I'm a big fan of Trial by Fire, and I think All Might ultimately has to kind of succumb to that. Same time, he's dealing with all these issues between, you know, the same issues he had in, in season two of the show, uh, of having to really uh, sit down with Deku's mom and say, look, I've, I've been trying to maintain this kind of hero status and this teacher status, but I haven't been doing enough to really let him become the next hero. Hope you can hear me. Some villains have taken the tower. They have control of the security system and everyone on this island is now being held as a hostage. When the heist happens and he kind of takes control for the first time, um, that's for me where I started to feel the character a little bit more. Like, okay, I'm getting who he is. And there's not a lot of backstory with him, and there, there really isn't. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to assume that there are reasons he is where he is when this starts, because nobody's just kind of born that way, you know, greedy and, and evil and what have you. Uh, but that's where, at least for me, I started to kind of feel the character. And I think we, in fact, we even went back and picked up some of the lines from earlier after we, which is, happens every now and then, you know, you do a show and, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes in, you start to feel the character a little more, and if the director likes where that's going, sometimes you'll go back and be like, let's, let's just pick up these first few lines just to make sure we're in the same character zone that we were. We should be able to restart the system ourselves. We just have to stay off the villain's radar until we get to the top floor, that's all. If we do that, the whole island will be safe again. I talk too fast sometimes. <laughs> Melissa is a sweet girl. She is um, the not technically related uh, niece of All Might, but she, she cares about him a lot, and she cares about her father a lot. And she pretty much cares about everyone a lot. Um, and I think that's part of her driving force, is like wanting to help the people she cares about and just wanting to be a hero, but in her own way because she doesn't have the powers to actually become a hero. So um, I think being a hero by supporting everyone is, is just the way she, she really wants to do things. I've gotta be a good student if I wanna be a hero. <gasps> you mean like a pro? Oh no, I gave up on that dream a while ago. I mean, I'm quirkless after all. You don't have a quirk? I think on initial impact, it's sort of difficult to hear because he's remembering a whole childhood of being bullied and feeling less than and doubting his self-worth. And he probably wonders in that moment, does she feel the same? Does she have that same feeling of inadequacy that I also grew up with? And it's also, I think, difficult that he doesn't get to speak with her about it uh, right away. I feel like he's finding a kindred spirit in someone and he's not allowed to share the true secret of, of his being. Uh, he's not allowed to talk about where he came from and his relationship with All Might, so he has to stay silent and can't really ask more about what makes her unique and special in this, this hero world. At this rate, the symbol of peace will disappear. The only reason Japan is able to keep its crime rate at 6% is because of your presence. Other countries hover around 20%, and some are even worse than that. Honestly, part of me wishes you'd never left. America could use you. There's no need for you to be so pessimistic, Dave. The world is full of capable pro heroes, not to mention the good people like you who support them. So Melissa, like David, is also a quirkless support. She is also a brilliant inventor and uh, definitely wants to follow in her father's footsteps. Deku, in the same way, wants to follow in All Might's footsteps and they're perfectly suited for each other. However, unlike All Might, who gladly passes down his power, David sort of keeps it and thinks that that's what All Might is doing. That instead of All Might, when he starts losing his power, giving it on, passing it on to someone else, just like All Might inherited his power, um, he tries to just make All Might the only thing that there ever can and will be. It doesn't occur to him that there's a new generation of heroes and supports who need the power and the knowledge from the previous generation to be passed on to them, a torch, as it were. Thank you. I couldn't have done any of this without your help, Sam. What does he mean that it's like you planned it? Don't tell me that. You were the one behind this. This was all you. I do think David Shields' motivation was misguided from the start. Clearly, he didn't know how 
bad things were gonna end up going. Uh, his intentions were good. But I would point out that most villains don't think that their intentions are bad. Most of them feel justified in what they're doing, and if we do get into a backstory from them, we know exactly why they're seeking revenge or why they need the power or what wrong they're trying to right. In my opinion, what he did was wrong. It was a much lesser wrong, and I thought that was one of the interesting things about this film is that because he feels bad about it and he never intended for all that to happen, he's, he gets kind of a pass. They kind of let it slide quite a bit. I mean, he has to go through quite a bit, almost loses his daughter. I mean, there's so much going on, and he suffered enough. It's very clear, I think, to me at the end that All Might has every intention of forgiving Dave. People make dumb decisions. Dave seems like he had you no know, ill intentions. He didn't mean for this to go awry. I think he, it, his, his intentions were noble at the very least. He wasn't trying to do anything sinister. This is a really dumb move. In the real world, world, I don't know if that would work. I think he'd probably have to pay for some of the choices that he made even more so. You can understand him as a character. You can understand how he could make that small jump, something that's kind of bad, and think he can control it, and then completely lose control and realize that he's kind of messed everything up. She definitely becomes disillusioned by him. It, it really hurt her. She wanted to be like him, so the fact that the person she wanted to be just like ended up being nothing like she thought that they were, I think it, it really took a toll on her emotional state. But, I mean, deep down, you know, it's her dad. I think she still loves him and cares about him, and I think that's why she set out to help him to realize that what he was doing wasn't right. To overcome the crisis in front of you. By giving everything you've got. And save people. No matter the cost. That's what makes someone a hero! I'll bring down this entire tower! Double Detroit! Smash! All that, all that preparation, I felt like I was uh, gearing up for some sort of space launch or something like that. Like, I was just like, wear myself up. No, the engines aren't right. Like, like start the countdown again. Of course, doing that attack together, the double Detroit smash was awesome. Actually, Justin recorded before I did, so I basically just had to tell Colleen, let me hear what Justin did. But at the time, I actually ended up doing it at the same exact time he was reading it. I don't know, is that symbolic? Does that mean that Justin is now taking over? No, I don't like this subject. I don't like the subject of All Might possibly dying someday. I don't like that. Does feel like a passing of the torch moment uh, for sure. Even more so than sort of the dire moment we had in, in season three of the show. This moment of them fighting together really, really solidifies that all of the, the training that they've done together, their entire relationship, it's all sort of put to the side because they realize that they need each other as a team in this moment. Uh, and being able to fight together, you know, with your hero is pretty incredible. So uh, it was just amazing to see and it does feel like that was their one shot to really fight together as equals. Uh, and, and from now, it's up to Deku to uh, pick up the torch and run with it. This film definitely keeps with the themes of who came before us, who's coming after us, and that torch and how it's passed from one to another. I think a great theme of this show is that will, above all else, is more important than being born with a talent. Talent, just like in real life, can be squandered, and even if you aren't born with a whole lot of ability, you can work on it and become better, and become better than someone who was born a certain way but didn't end up working on it or shaping their talent as they went on in life. That's a, that's a real life theme, and uh, one that my hero really explores, I think, in a very beneficial way. I think that this show, and especially this movie, does a really good job of showing you that natural talent uh, can only get you so far. If you don't put in the time and effort to bolster your skills and learn more about yourself and what you can do, you will not have the same advantages as someone like Deku or Melissa, who study hard and, and put every part of their being into their work. Uh, we've seen it a couple times in the show where even the students with the highest aptitude still doubt themselves the most. They, they struggle with their confidence uh, the most out of the whole class. So it's just interesting to see these, these children grow up and, and become more sure of themselves. Uh, 
And as they learn from each other and from their own personal experience, that natural talent is going to be built upon by their studies and their friendships. She finds her own way to, to help out despite everything that tells her that she can't. And um, she, she is able to support the team and, and help everybody, everybody get through things that they may not have gotten through otherwise. And I think it, it just says a lot about just people in general. Um, I really like the idea that uh, people are able to become heroes in their own ways, despite not having the physical or mental powers to do so. This movie, of course, uh, is, a, is a profound lesson in not holding on to the past that you have to you have to look to the future to see see where our next heroes are going to come from you have to lift those people up Thank you so much, as always, everyone, for your support for the franchise and the entire My Hero Academia universe. It's really amazing and such a joy to be a part of, so I'm really glad that we get to share this together. Enjoy the movie. Thank you for all your continued support, and keep watching My Hero Academia plus Ultra. Being able to work on My Hero is a dream come true. I can't believe I actually got to just do that right now, and I get to talk about it. Um, I can't wait to share this with you all, and uh, I hope you really, really enjoy the dub, because we worked uh, pretty dang hard on it. Thank you so much for watching. To all the fans, I hope you enjoy my performance. I hope it's up to par with the rest of the series that you love so much, and I'm looking forward to joining your ranks. Well, I guess that's it. I'm done, huh? Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been another awesome experience working on My Hero Academia. We only get to do we only get to do this show one time, and it's really sad to know that uh, one day I'm not going to be recording on this show anymore because it's by far the favorite thing I've ever recorded. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Um, or if you want to, if you want, just keep rolling, and uh, you could just uh, just watch me staring at the camera for a little while if you'd like. You're really going to do that, aren't you? <laughs>